Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Pat. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you eight easy techniques that are working in SEO for 2020 and beyond. Now, before we continue, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're into SEO and digital marketing, as I'm constantly putting out new content that is mostly step-by-step -step tutorials on how you can improve your website and your search engine optimization. Now, make sure you watch to the end of this video because tip number seven is very important and not a lot of people are talking about it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What is going on, guys? Now we are on my laptop. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we optimize our title tags. Now, this might sound very basic, but I can't stress how important it is to have optimized title tags because for two reasons. One, Google reads these title tags in order to understand what that page is about and what keywords they should rank you for. And two, if you have a good title tag, it's going to increase your click through rate, which is also going to affect your rankings right? So you do want to make sure that your title tags are optimized, that you have a unique title tag for each page, and you want to use uh, different tactics to make your stand out, such as numbers, characters, brackets, etc., to stand out from the competition. And you also want to make sure that you're keeping it between 50 to 60 characters long, because if it's, if it's anything longer than that, then Google's going to shorten it. And you want to make sure that your title tag nicely structured and that a user can see the entire thing in order to improve your click through rate, right? We want to make sure they look nice and clean. Um, and then of course you want to have your main target keyword per page. Um, and then an easy way to find uh, any title tags that may need improvement is to use screaming frog. So let me go ahead and open up screaming frog here. Um, and if you guys, don't have Screaming Frog, I highly suggest you to go and download it. It's a free tool up to 500 pages, I believe. Uh, perfectly fine for most small websites uh, to use the free version. Basically what it does is it crawls your website and gives you a bunch of data that is very useful uh, when doing you know, SEO and optimizing for different uh, on-page factors, right? And also technical. So let's go ahead and see title tags we can improve here, right? So I already put a website and I already did a crawl, but if you didn't, just put your URL and then just click start um, and then just let it download. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to page titles and then uh, we can go over here to the side and let's click uh, over 60 characters. So you can see here that 81 pages have a title tag that is over. Uh, 60 characters so we would want to go through these and see how we can better optimize them right so they don't get shortened on a google search result um, and this is also very important guys uh, because you can also uh, see title tags that are below 30 characters so if we click on this uh, we can also see which of your uh, pages have title tags that are below 30 characters, right? So we'd want to go in here and optimize these right away. Then you can also check your descriptions if you wanted to. Uh, you can check for pages that are missing, pages that have duplicates. Um, so you can see that Screaming Frog is very useful and it gives you uh, data right away, right? So this could be very useful to improve your title tags. And let me show you a quick way that you can uh, get some good ideas is basically uh, look for the people that are paying for ads, right? So anyone that's paying for Google ads, you can pretty much guarantee that they're getting clicks, right? So you can kind of see what title tags they're using and even their descriptions, right? To see what keywords you should use to increase your click through rate, right? Um, because if a company's spending money, it's because they're getting results, right? So you can kind of mimic what they're doing and uh, do the same for your pages, right? So that's something you can do there. Um, tip number two is to fix your business citations. Um, this is very important, especially for local SEO, because you do want to make sure that all your business citations um, stay consistent with your name, address, phone number, and website across the web, um, simply because Google is a machine. It is not a human being. So if you put different types of information, they're going to be confused. Um, and you can use the Moz uh, local citation checker here. Um, I already did a search uh, for this company right here um, and you can see it gives you this data 11% missing 67 incorrect 22% correct uh, and they only have a couple of the main uh, business listings here um, and basically it lets you know that you know 67% of these are incorrect and you can see why right away because they have their phone number 
listed in different variations. You can see here they have a plus one, uh, and and then the per, per, uh, parentheses here they have the plus one, no parentheses. Here they just have it all together. So you can see that these slight variations can uh, create problems when it comes to uh, Google understanding your business information, right? So we want to make sure uh, Google understands our business where we're located um, and make it easy as possible for them, you know, to understand that we're an actual established business. Um, and that's really why you want to keep your data across uh, different websites the same. And then you can also go into these websites if you don't have them and also get listed on them, right? Um, so this is a good tool that you can use here for your business. Uh, tip number three is to improve your site speed. So as you guys may know, site speed is a very important uh, signal to Google in terms of ranking performance, right? I um, mean, you don't have to go crazy with this. You know, you don't have to go 0.1 point or one second, you know, uh, you usually want to keep it between the two to three uh, second loading speed is usually a good or an obtainable uh, amount when it comes to you know normal websites right and you can use tools such as GT metrics or tools pingdom.com uh, to check your page speed uh, you can see here uh, I already put one of my uh, clients websites in here you can see we have an 85 performance grade uh, loading time so you do want to make sure that you're checking your performance across these other uh, platforms simply because you will get different results using different tools uh, none of these is going to give you a perfect result. So you do want to make sure you're checking uh, throughout several different platforms. Um, and you also want to make sure uh, that you're staying in the same uh, loading speed as your competitors. So go in there and do a check for the top five competitors for your keywords and make sure that your loading time is around the same as them, if not better, right? Um, and that's really going to help you out there. Uh, the next tip I have is optimize your internal linking. Um, internal linking just means that you should be internally linking to related pages. Uh, and for two reasons, one, uh, it passes relevancy throughout your website. So if you have uh, a page that has a very high authority because it has many backlinks pointing to it, you want to make sure that you're interlinking to other pages to pass that link juice to the other pages on your website. Um, and then also Google crawls all the links on your website. So if they see that you're linking from one article to another that's related, it's going to pass more authority. Um, and this is very useful, especially when you're creating content silos, um, which I'll put a video up above where I go more in depth on this. But basically, it's a very good strategy to help you rank for harder keywords um, by creating, you know, content clusters, right? And that's really going to help you out there. And the next tip we have after internal linking is to use Google Search Console to identify pages in the 8th to 20th position. Um, and the reason I like to target uh, pages or keywords that are in this position is because they usually are the easiest to boost by doing some simple on-page uh, optimization, right? Uh, so what we can do is we can go over to Google Search Console. Um, and this is a great tool, guys. Make sure you have this any SEO should have this great resource from Google themselves um, and basically this free tool is going to allow us to identify those uh, those important pages that we can further optimize to get even more uh, traffic going to our website right really utilizing uh, longer keywords that we might have never even recognized right um, and I learned this from Nathan Gotch very very good SEO that goes more in depth on this you guys should check them out but basically what you want to do is you want to go in here, make sure you filter by the last 28 days. And then we're going to go over here. You can see queries. It gives you different queries that you rank for. Let's go over to pages. Um, and these pages are, uh, you're going to get the most, the top pages that are getting the most clicks. Let's go ahead and filter this by impressions. Um, and then I'm probably going to take a look at this first page. So let me go ahead and open that. Uh, and then let's go back here. And let's go ahead and actually click on this page. And then once we're on this page, let's scroll down. You can see it has 139 clicks, uh, 19,000 impressions, average position 11. Let's go over to queries. And here are the different queries um, that our web, that our page is uh, showing up and getting clicks from, right? We can filter this by impressions as well. Um, and basically what you wanna do here is you wanna take a look at these keywords and identify keywords that are getting impressions that you might not have included in the actual content, right? 
Um, so for an example, let's go ahead and take this keyword down here, lemon and acid reflux. I'll just copy that. Let's go to our article and we can control F and then let's just paste it in here. And you can see that I don't actually have this keyword anywhere in this article. So that's probably something that I would want to look into, right? I want to make sure that this keyword is within the content so that we could, you know, improve our performance for this keyword and, you know, possibly get higher rankings uh, to get some more traffic, right? Um, and then let's go ahead and see this keyword here that we are getting impressions, but we have no clicks. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. We just paste. Um, so you can see I have this keyword in here once. Um, so I probably want to incorporate this keyword, uh, you know, another one or two more times in here just to improve the performance on this particular keyword, right? Um, and then let's do one last one. So let's do this one is lemon water good for acid reflux. And let's see how this one uh, is doing. So you can see again, it looks like we don't have this keyword anywhere in the content. Um, and that one actually got some clicks. Um, and the position, let me go back. Position looks like position average is eight. So we can further optimize this as well to see if we can include it once or twice within the content. I mean, you can basically uh, repeat this strategy for any of the top pages on your website just so you can start ranking for more long tail keywords, which is also going to bring in more traffic to your website, right? Very good strategy. And, and this is again a free tool. So go and make sure that you're utilizing Google Search Console properly. And then if we go back, we can see the next tip we have is to fix 404 errors. And you can do this again using Screaming Frog. Um, so let's go ahead and go into here. And you want to go over to response codes. And then let's see response codes, click the filter button and let's go down to uh, client error. Um, and you can see we don't have any 404s on this website, but if you did, you would want to go into that page and see if it has any purpose or if you can redirect it to another page um, or simply get rid of that page as a whole. Um, and in some cases, you can even make sure that you're uh, creating a custom 404 page um, with valuable resources so you can send them to your home about services, things like that, um, if they were to land on a 404 page. So that's a quick tip that you can do there. Tip number seven is to optimize your images for Google image search guys. And this is very important um, because you can receive uh, a lot more traffic. And, and in my experience, it's a lot easier to rank for an image versus a blog post, right? Especially for uh, topics that are uh, visual based, right? Where people might wanna see a picture before they actually go into the post. Um, and this is a great way to increase your traffic very quickly by simply optimizing your images for Google images search, right? Basically what you want to do is one, you want to add a keyword into the odd tag. Then you want to include a partial keyword in the file name. You can see example, best flower pots. That could be, you know, something to name the actual file. And then you can even add text on the images using something like Canva. Um, and you want to do this because Google actually scans the image and can read text that is on an actual image. And let me show you guys how this works. Um, so this is one of my clients picture right here. You can see the, the key term uh, that this is ranking for, but basically this was a blog and this was our featured image that we have. And basically all I did was I got two different pictures and I put them together using just the free uh, image editing software. And then I just put the words versus on this picture. And you can see where I got the idea from over here. Um, and it, you can see 23 hours ago and it's already in the fifth position. Um, and I'm pretty sure this will continue moving up as I personally think it's a little bit more visually appealing as these other pictures. But so you can actually understand that Google does read text. Look at this picture that's ranking ahead of me from Pinterest. They have the exact keywords, pine straw, mulch, pros and cons on this image and it's ranking in fourth. So this is a good strategy that you guys can use um, when you're trying to optimize for Google images, right? You can one, put your odd text and then two, name the file and then three, add text on the actual image. Um, and you can see here, if we go into 
uh, the website. Let's go ahead and check out that blog post. Um, and then we can go over to featured images. So let's see here, if I click on featured image, you can see that I have the keyword in the actual file name here, pine straw versus mulch. And then again, in the alt text, right? This is very important guys. A very good strategy if you want to rank on Google images. And like I said, this works incredibly, incredibly well and really, really fast. So it is going to increase uh, the traffic coming to your website by utilizing this strategy. Um, and then the last tip I have for you guys is to add schema to pages or posts. Um, and my favorite schema, especially for local businesses, is WP uh, SEO schema, I believe. And, and most of these are free plugin guys that you can get on WordPress. So if you have WordPress, feel free to check these out um, and see which one you like the best. Let me go ahead and show you which one I personally like. Um, I personally like WPSEO schema. And the reason I like this for local businesses is because it has a specific option. Uh, you can see site type, local business, and then it has different options for a bunch of different local businesses, right? Uh, you can see locksmith, HVAC, plumber, roofing, etc. Um, so it pretty much has something for everyone. Um, or you could just pick local business, right? If it doesn't have one that's specific to your industry. Um, and then you can add, you know, description, hours, geo coordinates, address, and this just helps Google understand about your business a little bit more. Um, basically, all it, all it is is a piece of code that goes into your website that helps uh, the Google Crawlboss to understand more about your business and more about your services. Um, and you can have several types of schema on the same page. Um, so don't be afraid to use more than one type of schema, guys. Um, there's different types of schema. You have FAQ schema, you have uh, review schema, you have article schema. There's a whole bunch of schema, guys. So make sure you are utilizing this as it will be, I think, becoming more important uh, in 2020 and 2021, right? Um, so that's basically all the tips that I have for you guys. I hope you guys learned something new. Um, I know I kind of went kind of fast. If you need any help with any of it, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found anything of value, leave me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.